that when it comes to carving out a successful career in cloud computing, particularly with AWS, choosing the right certification roadmap is absolutely crucial. In this video, we're going to explore the best path to take, starting with three certifications and finally moving on to a specialty certification that AWS provides, which I think is the best roadmap you can take for any of the AWS cloud certifications. And the specialty certification is highly regarded and can set you apart in the industry. And let's start with the AWS cloud practitioner certification. Now, this is often the first step in your AWS journey and for good reason. It's designed to give you the essentials of AWS and make you understand the core key services that they have on offer. So this does make it perfect for beginners or anyone who doesn't really have a strong fundamental knowledge in cloud. And do remember, it's not just engineers that actually take this certification. This is open to anyone. You could be a salesman, you could be a manager, you could be someone that's an account manager. The whole premise of it is to put out that understanding of what is available. Now, following on from that, I wouldn't let that terminology of it being entry level for you. As I just mentioned, it does cover a range of topics and those cloud basic concepts that are core like EC2, S3 and RDS. And it does touch on the other important uh, models like billing practices and the AWS global infrastructure. Now, by the end of your preparation for this certification, you should have a solid grasp of the AWS ecosystem, which is very much essential before you move on to getting into those solutions architects and the very much cornerstone of engineering practices. So think of the cloud practitioner as something that not only validates your understanding of AWS, but it gives you that confidence booster that you're looking for to think on, do I actually like this? Do I want to do something else? Is cloud really for me? And you can do all of that without taking the certification. You can do the online learning that is free provided by AWS on their website. Now, there are other elements of why the cloud practitioner is a little bit important. It can give you discounts sometimes towards the certifications above the cloud practitioner at the associate level. And that has become quite a running thing with AWS. They want people to take these certifications and they will offer you discounts if you pass them. The key question here is the cloud practitioner relevant to people already in engineering? Is it worth taking it? Is it worth investing those hours over the course of a couple of weeks to a month to pass the certification? Now, if you're paying for it, then potentially I would say yes, because you're going to get that discount. But if you're not paying for it and your employer is paying for it, then you could probably move up to that associate level straight away, which leads me on to my next certification. Now, once you've got that cloud practitioner under your belt, you know the AWS services, what they have on offer, it's time to move to the AWS Solutions Architect Associate. Now this is where the real fun begins and this is where you start to engage with the technical aspects in AWS in much more detail. And the Solutions Architect Associate is much more of a test of your ability to design and implement scalable systems. Now those systems, they don't just have to be scalable, they have to be resilient and secure. So make sure you've got your security hat on also. And you'll need to familiarize yourself with key architectural best practices. And once you move to this level, you're covering a broad spectrum of infrastructure. So you've got compute, networking, storage, and database. And you move on to even further elements where you can figure out how to optimize the architecture you're delivering, not only to get the best performance, but to get the best bang for your buck. Not everybody wants to get a humongous cloud bill after you deploy your architecture. And that is one of the most invaluable skills that any architect can have, is actually building a system that's going to work and not cause a massive bill for the client or the company you're working for. So remember, the Solutions Architect isn't just testing your theoretical knowledge, it actually challenges you to apply the knowledge in real world scenarios. A lot of the questions are gonna be based on those scenario based questions like, XYZ is working over here. How can I improve it? How can I make it better? What service can I use instead of this one? Now, remember, there is the associate and then there is the professional. Do you really need the professional on top of the solutions architect associate? I think it really depends. I think for most people, the answer is going to be probably not. Now, if you really, really love AWS, you maybe you even work for AWS or you work for a company that offers you an incentive to pass that professional exam, like a bonus or a pay rise, then go ahead. But I think for the average person, the associate really is enough. Not everybody's gonna become an architect. Not everybody wants to even be one. Um, and I think it's really key to understand the naming convention of this certification. If you compare the Solutions Architect Associate to Azure Cloud, for example, it's just the Azure Administrator. Azure then have another certification on top of that, which is an advanced level called Solutions Architect. I actually think AWS may even benefit from changing the name of this exam 
although it has a lot of solutions architect methodologies, it is very much still an engineering exam, which in my opinion, I'd consider that associate level, which I know they do call it the solutions architect associate, but it doesn't make you a solutions architect if you understand that. That's the point I'm trying to get across. Now finally, after you've mastered the fundamentals and you've gained some hands-on experience, you've done your prior prediction, you've taken the solutions architect so idea, you might be ready to specialize. And when it comes to specializing in certifications on AWS, there are many, many different ones you can do. There's the networking, machine learning, databases. But the one I want to talk about is the security specialty certification. Now that stands out to me as the most valuable credential that you can earn on top of any of these certifications AWS provide in that specialty level. And the reason I say that is because in today's cloud-driven world, security is paramount. And this certification proves that you have the advanced skills necessary to secure AWS environments. Now you may be wondering, well, what's the difference? Do I really need it? Because there is the element of security in the solutions architect. When I agree with you, that is true. But the security certification dives deep into areas of identity and access, database uh, protection, encryption, incident response, you go into all of the security services like WAF, Macy, etc. And you really need to focus on compliance and how AWS aligns to so many different industries, you know. Not every industry has the same security regulated requirements. Now let's say you're working in defense, that's going to be completely different to healthcare. And even in like massive financial services companies, they're going to have heavy security regulations. And what makes that certification special? And what makes that certification truly powerful is that it actually focuses on providing those security elements in real world environments that are complex. And it's really not just about knowing the tools, it's about knowing how to use them to protect yourself from threats. And when you're working on critical infrastructure and you're hosting data in these environments, security is, is becoming a bull rush right now. Cybersecurity is going to go through the roof over the next coming years, especially with the amount of elections we have coming up, the amount of proxy wars around the world. Think about it. Cybersecurity jobs really are going to go through the roof. So if you achieve this certification, not only does that signal to employers that you know what you're talking about, so achieving this certification signals to employers and your peers that you're very much capable of taking on the toughest security challenges. Now, if we compare it to the other specialty certifications that they have, like networking, for example, I don't really think you need to have a specialist certification in networking. And the reason for that is that every engineer and every architect will know networking. You need to know networking to be within the job in the first place, but not every engineer specializes in security in that deep area. And that's clear to see, you know, we're still having security incidents all around the world. So by following this certification roadmap, starting with the AWS Cloud Practitioner, moving on to Solutions Architect Associate, building up some really good experience along the way, and then moving on to that security specialty. You're not just gaining credentials, you're actually building a comprehensive skill set. And you know, that skill set is highly sought after in the industry. So all of this certifications and this learning path you're going on, even if you choose not to take those certifications, but just do the learning anyway, you're going to be able to design, deploy and secure AWS environments. And that makes you a valuable asset in any organization. Almost every enterprise in the world is looking to leverage cloud computing or they're already in the process or already finished that process and continuing to expand on what they already have. So make sure you're prepared and you've got all of this in your locker.